Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me teaching. And today I have this system of equations for you guys. So why don't we just get into the question? So this question asks us to prove that the, the system of equations, this, does not have any positive integer solutions. And this question is actually a very good practice for using the Fermat's infinite descent principle. So here we're going to use the infinite descent principle and because of that we're also going to use proof by contradiction. So we're first going to assume that this system of equations does have a positive integer solution. Okay? So if we just let this first equation to be equation one, and this is equation two, then the first thing we're going to do is first add up one and two. So we'll get, so we see this plus this will be six x squared. This plus this is six y squared. If we take out the six, then it'll be six bracket x squared plus y squared. Okay, and this is equal to, just add those two, z squared plus t squared. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, this means that z squared plus t squared must be divisible by 6, right? And since it is divisible by 6, then it must be divisible by 3, right? So we know that this whole thing is divisible by 3. And just a little note that any positive square number, once you divide it by 3, or you could say mod 3, then, then it only leads it only leaves a remainder of 0 or 1, okay? And same for t squared. So if we see that the whole thing is divisible by 3, then we must know that z squared and t squared must be divisible by 3. Why? Because if we split it into cases, so if z squared divided by 3 will remain to 0, likewise for t squared, there will be 0 plus 0, which is 0, which satisfies, but if it's anything else, such as 0 plus 1 equals 1, bad, 1 plus 1 equals 2, bad, then it all fails. So, then we know that z squared and t squared each must be divisible by 3. And since z squared is divisible by 3, then z itself has to be divisible by 3. And this is actually very easy to prove. I'll leave this to you to prove this identity. So then, using this information, then we can just let z, so since z is divisible by 3, then we can just let z to be 3z1 and t to be 3t1, right? So then the right-hand side will just become, well, it will be, once you square this, it will be 9z1 squared plus 9t1 squared. Then if we take out the 9, then it will be 9 times z1 squared plus t1 squared. Okay? And now, if we divide 3 on both sides, then we'll get... The left-hand side will be 2, the right-hand side will be 3. Okay? So now we have to notice again. So once we have this, this means that this whole thing has to be divisible by 3, right? But 2 and 3 are co-prime. So we must know that the inside, which is x squared plus y squared, has to be divisible by 3. And you can write this as 3 bar x squared plus y squared, right? And if we use the same logic as we did here, then we know that x squared and y squared each are divisible by 3. Then that means that x and y itself has to be divisible by 3. So then we do the exact same substitution. We can just let x to be 3x1 and y to be 3y1, right? And then notice, if we plug this into the original equation, then... We see that if we open the square of all of these, then we'll see the coefficient is all 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, right? 
So then, in the system of equations, we can just cancel out all of the nines. So that means that x1, y1, z1, and t1 is another solution set, right? So we see x1, y1, z1, and t1 is a solution to this system of equations. But now comes in the infinite descent part. Since this solution is smaller than the original solution, because this is three times less, then I'm going to emphasize some key words. This says does not have positive integer solutions. Positive. That means that if we repeat this process, just replace the original system of equations with these terms, and we redo the process, then if we redo the process infinite amount of times, then the, the, then the solutions will have will go down, 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 down. But since it's positive integer solutions, we can't let it go down forever. So by using the method of infinite descent, then we have contradicted to our original assumption, which was this does have positive integer solutions. So we have proved that this equation, that the system of equations does not have positive integer solutions. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoy my video and you like and you want more videos like this, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.